Hello and welcome to Ditching Hourly. I'm Jonathan Stark. Today I'm joined by guest Kurt Elster. Kurt is a senior e-commerce consultant who helps Shopify store owners uncover hidden profits in their websites. Kurt is the founder of e-commerce agency EtherCycle, host of the popular e-commerce hacks weekly video series, author of e-commerce bootcamp, and host of the unofficial Shopify podcast. <laughs> Kurt knows e-commerce. In this episode, Kurt explains how he used productized services to escape the hourly billing trap. Enjoy. Hey, Kurt, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. It's my honor and pleasure. <laughs> so could you start off by sort of the name, rank, and serial number, let people know who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Uh, I'm Kurt Elster, and I help Shopify store owners uncover hidden profits in their websites. So unlike other... Uh, Shopify experts, so designers, developers, marketers. I fall into all of those categories in my agency, EtherCycle. I'm solely concerned in delivering the highest possible ROI to store owners. And that's what's great about being in e-commerce as a niche, is we can always quantify our results. So in, in building that business, I actually, I, I wear many hats. And <laughs> so aside from my, my e-commerce consultancy, I host a, a podcast, very niche podcast, the unofficial Shopify podcast. Not the most original name, but it works. And that we just cracked 100,000 downloads on. It's been sponsored um, for over 12 months, so it's no longer just a, a labor of love. Um, and I have some info products uh, related to it, uh, like e-commerce Hacks Weekly, a subscription video series I host, e-commerce boot camp, a, a book and course about e-commerce sales funnels, uh, and, a co and some, some other things. Wow, that's tons. Yeah. So at, at the core, EtherCycle is... What would you say it is? Is it a, a web design firm or, you know, to, just so people can, because you're so focused on that, I, I want to make sure that people can kind of sure. connect the okay. dots. And, you know, uh, to the layperson, if, you know, if someone, if I'm at a party and someone says, you're like, oh, what do you do? I say, I own a web design agency. I think that's the the easiest way for people to think of it. And certainly we we make websites and I'm a, you know, by experience and trade, I'm a, a graphic designer. I and I work with a, a front-end developer and a marketer. So yeah, I'd say we, we're a, a small boutique web design agency. But it's so niche, I don't, like, I personally never think of us as a web design agency. But that is, like, on our taxes, it says web design. <laughs> Perfect. So how did you come to focus down that, that heavy, a, a lot of uh, web design agencies, you know, are super general and they'll, they'll do anything for anyone more or less. Oh, oh God, don't, don't say generalist. Oh, just, I'm, I'm getting ill. Oh <laughs> God, I need to lay down. No, all right. Enough, enough goofing. Sure. So it was, it was a process, you know, oddly, well, I'll give you the whole story. One day I got up to go to work. I was working for an e-commerce company that did drop shipping and I started tying my shoes. They're Converse All-Stars. I remember it. And I broke down crying because I, I, like, I was literally that desperate with having a boss with going to work. And I don't think it was necessarily his fault. Um, I think it was it was me. I'm I'm just I have the personality to be an entrepreneur. And when people used to ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would literally say entrepreneur. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what the business was. I just knew I wanted to own one. Yeah. So I, with no plan, I quit my job. And because I didn't know any better. I had a friend uh, who was the best man at my wedding, and he had just lost his job as a JavaScript developer. And I said, hey, do you want to build a SaaS business with me? And he didn't know any better either. He goes, okay. So a year later, we like the SaaS business has gone nowhere, and I want to keep the lights on so people who misunderstood what we're doing are not – like local businesses. we got a great deal in office space – are knocking on the door going, hey, can you help us with our website? So fine, And I had been turning them away. So finally I said, yeah, okay, I could do that. Cause like I'd figured out web design, I knew, and he knew front end development. So all right, I'll make a website so that you know I don't have to go into debt. Mm. We bootstrapped everything, and I was like, oh wait, we're actually we're pretty good at this. So I did another one. I'm like, oh, pretty good at this. And the first time someone paid me twenty five hundred bucks to build a website, I was like, are you kidding? This is insane. What kind of what? <laughs> Who pays twenty five hundred dollars for what? And I did built a whole custom WordPress website. And then so like after, you know, six, 10 months of that, I was like, wait, why, why don't we just do this? We'll just, we'll just do this local businesses. And that worked really well. And then I traded up the chain and like through serendipity, through being in the right place at the right time, I started doing, we started doing uh, outsourced work for creative agencies. So now suddenly my portfolio has like Verizon, the NFL and Hilton hotels in it. Mm -hmm. But at the, the same time, and it's pure luck, I had a, 
a friend who owns a bike shop locally. He said, oh, can you help? Like, my website's terrible. Help me out. It's okay. Like, there's this thing called Shopify. You want to try it out? It's okay. And we, again, we don't know what we don't know. So we're like, let's just build a custom theme for Shopify for like $1,000. No problem. Mm -hmm. So we did it. And because of that, Shopify, someone at Shopify took notice. They said, hey, you built a custom theme. That's great. We got this thing called the Experts Program we're trying to start. Do you want to be in it? So sure. Occasionally, I get a lead through it. One day, I figured out how to write a sales letter. And I put that sales letter into, instead of just being like, we're, uh, we, 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 and we do this and blah, blah, blah. Instead, I wrote a sales letter to the person reading. And I put it in Shopify Experts. And now suddenly, I'm getting a ton of leads. So Mm -hmm. It wasn't long before he said, like, while well, I'm getting these great leads that are deeply satisfying and they seem easy. Like, wait, why why don't I just do the e-commerce stuff? It's less glamorous and a lot more rewarding. So that was two years ago, and that was the best decision I ever made. It's a long story, sorry. No, that's okay. So how do you price your services? I loathe hourly billing. If you <laughs> like the only reason to do hourly billing is if you're ripping people off, right? Are you it's cause you want to pat it out like a lawyer. You know, you're like, eh, eh, that took a, I thought about that for 60 seconds, bill them for 15 minutes, like that kind of thing. I, I tell clients that everything is fixed price, fixed scope, meaning I will do exactly what we've described for exactly the price I've stated, and there's no shenanigan, no shenanigans. There's no balloon invoice at the end. There's no scope creep on your part. Everybody's happy, and no one has ever pushed back on that, not once. And that's that that's what productized consulting services is. It's fixed price, fixed scope offerings. Yeah, I, I can definitely second that. Clients love when you can get, actually give them a price up front. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, like that alone make, lets me stand out. So you guys do something even, I would say, even one step further, or maybe maybe it's implied in what you said. But you have a, like a pricing page. It's like a Chinese menu of here are all these things and here's the price. Yeah, it's great because by the time someone talks to me, if they get on the phone with me, they already know exactly what I offer and what the prices are. When they get on the phone with me, it's to figure out two things. Am I legit? Are we a good fit? A good fit? Can we be friends? Um, that's, you know, number one, are they comfortable giving me that money? And two, of the packages they've looked at, whether you know, it's like 2500 bucks, 5000 4000 10000 which is the right one. Mm-hmm. Like they're literally calling me to say, help me pick which way to give you money. <laughs> And because like if I call someone on the phone, you know, if I go to a car dealership, I don't want you've got like the car salesman and you kind of know what it's going to cost, but you don't really know because of the options and new versus used and all these different models. And then like we're going to negotiate. I like no one likes that. Okay, I like it. My wife hates this, but I like I will go to car dealerships and I'll practice negotiating and I never buy a car like I've done this a couple (laughs) times as practice. I'm like, let's just go test drive something. She's like, oh, shit, here we go. You know? So here I'm like, I'm like do you, I go to the Nissan dealership. I'm like, I saw you have a GTR. I'm, I really want one. Can we test drive that? Sure. They pull out of the showroom for me. And then I negotiate them down. This is a $100,000 car. They're ready to give it to me out the door for it. It was like in the high 80s. And by that point, I'm like, this seems like a good idea. My wife is like, you can't. No, you can't do that. I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's playing with fire. Yeah, no, but if you like... If you have the self-restraint, that's actually a really good way to practice some of these things. Car salesmen are shameless, so you can be comfortable being shameless, and that that helps. This is like that's a dark. I've told too many people that that <laughs> don't go. They'll go mess with car dealers to uh, to practice my negotiation skills. Wow. So, can you give people an idea of what some of the you know you said you said um, fixed price fixed scope and i'm sure a lot of people are scratching their heads about fixed scope so can you kind of describe what some of the the productized services you offer are sure absolutely okay so i broke it down and you can see it ethercycle.com slash pricing check it out um just don't rip it off because i do look uh (laughs) (laughs) but use this model like use the model build something better than me um so i break it down based on what like people's the life cycle they are in their store so first i say uh, we got three options for store setup and design. You know, so you're at the very beginning. Either you're starting a new store, or you're just, or you're moving to Shopify. So I say when people are on the phone with me, I say there's three ways we can work together, and this is assuming they're not doing a custom theme, because um, mm. that's open ended. So I say there's three ways we can work together. Number one, I could do the whole thing end to end. I could set up the entire store, set up the theme, do everything for you, and then when it's finished, you give me your input on what you want to change. And that's $4,995 flat. Typically, it's two weeks to start. Two weeks before I could start, 
I always say this. I could have nothing in the books, and I will say it's two weeks before it could start. Two weeks <laughs> to deliver it, to fulfill it, um, and then figure on revisions. That's really up to you. Like if you can get me the revisions quickly and succinctly, I will do it right away. And the the revisions are – we limit it to – I say – this is the literally the line I use. I say it's two rounds of ten revisions – um, it used to be unlimited, but some guy sent me a 10,000 word document with his revisions and he ruined the party for everybody. <laughs> so if you have like two rounds of 12 revisions, I'm not going to be a stickler about it. <laughs> so that way, like I have, you know, I've defined like, here's what I'm going to do for you. Here's the time it's going to take. Here's the price it's going to cost. And oh, if there's changes, okay, here's, here's what's involved. Um, here's how many changes you get. And most hmm. people, it's like two rounds of 10 revisions. Most people don't even need that much. Right. But I just want to like have an end on it, so they can't just keep using me as like free maintenance because that's happened. I don't want people to take advantage. And then I say I'll give you thirty days of support, and then that's like a great opportunity because people are scared. They're like, well, if you know, you're not just going to set up the store and run away, right? As if something's going to go wrong. <laughs> um, I say no. I get thirty days of support. You get any problems? You know, you just email me instead of sitting on hold with Shopify, and I will I will assist you based on my experience in setting up a hundred other stores. Mm. So is that a profitable thing for you or is it more of a loss leader to get people in the door and try to upsell them something else later? No, not in the slightest. The the big advantage, if you didn't work only on, if I didn't work only on Shopify, if I didn't do, if I hadn't done a hundred theme setups already, then maybe this wouldn't be profitable. But no, it, it is, my effective hourly rate on a bad one is $200 an hour. And it typically, because it goes so well, People will come back for you know maintenance, and then for those, I'll just give them a one-off price. They'll come back. They'll say, hey, how do I get more traffic to the store? How do I get more engaged prospects? And then I've got services for that too. It's a, a product ladder. And no, it, it's, it is profitable enough that I don't have to do it myself. I could pay to have someone fulfill it for me and have it be profitable. I cherry pick the ones that I like, those I fulfill myself, and then the ones I, <laughs> where I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not the best fit for this because I'm not enthusiastic about it. I have two people that I will have to do fulfillment for me. So just to call out to the dear listener, what this demonstrates is that it's an example of breaking the, the time barrier so that you know, since Kurt's fixed pricing this particular engagement and others, getting more efficient at it and getting better and better and better increases his hourly rate more than he could have actually done in the first place. Like if you're, if your effective hourly rate for one that goes smoothly is like 500 bucks, I imagine that you would agree that, you know, if somebody calls you up, Hey, what's your hourly rate for a Shopify store set up? Oh, $500 an hour. Even if I say, uh, like if someone really presses me and goes, what's your hourly rate? I'll go, uh, 200 bucks an hour. Even that, like for Shopify stores can be on the high end mm -hmm. and they're okay with it. They're like, well, you know, you've demonstrated expertise. No one pushes back on it, but you could tell they're not thrilled mm -hmm. versus if I'm like, all right, you want your store set up. You want it done right. Here's the, I can do it for you. It's 5,000 bucks. Like it's easy to wrap your head around. You're buying a thing now. You're what you're buying is a finished store. Yeah, it sounds like a no-brainer even to me, and I don't have an e-commerce store. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, maybe, maybe I should have an e-commerce store. It's only 5000 bucks, <laughs> you know? It's, it just changes the whole, the whole dynamic. So now, if, what would you say to people who are thinking, well, sure, that works for you, Kurt, because you are a recognized expert at, you know, for a specific thing. You know, can somebody, like, what, what would somebody have to do to kind of, do you think, in your opinion, to get where you are? The the big advantage to ignoring what I charge for it, ignoring what you charge for the market, the format works for everybody because it's it makes everyone comfortable. I'm stay I'm you know hanging it all out there. I'm saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do for you, and this is the price, and then so that way I'm not dealing with tire kickers because they already know, and then they you know our people are much more comfortable when they get on the phone with me because they already know like everything up front and we're just trying to figure out like are we a good fit and what makes sense. So that uh that aspect of it could work for anybody as far as like pricing, you know, and I'm at the as far as Shopify experts go, I'm at the higher end. There are certainly people more expensive than me, but that's based on trust. So by demonstrating like I show uh, a lot of stores that people are familiar with that people like that I've worked on. And then I, I give away a ton of value. I think that's the important factor. Like, yeah, there's some, I got, you know, some cool, cool stores. Like the guy who makes the actual one ring from Lord of the Rings for the movies, Jens Hansen is his name. 
like that that's a client of mine and he's a, a wonderful nice man but th- like no one mentions that like that's way less important to people than all the free valuable content i put out there i've got um a free skillshare course on how to set up a shopify theme that that people will often like people will take it and then be like yeah you're the guy okay cool i've got free a uh, five-day email course pdf cheat sheet as a lead magnet a um, bunch of blog posts. Of course, I've got, you know, I'm on 80 episodes of my podcast. But even like when I started, I was, I just had some blog posts and a five day email course. And that was more, that was enough to, to pull, to pull this off. Nice. So I think, I think it does, I think it bears mentioning that all of that, that body of work that you just listed out, it's all hyper focused on a particular thing. And it's all you, Shopify. Yeah. yeah, it's super focused. So, like, I know, I know, or I know, and see a lot of people online who, you know, and I, I was guilty of this when I was just sort of a garden variety web developer, you know, before iPhone came out. So, say in the mid to early two thousands, I would just blog about whatever was interesting to me that week. It could be anything from like the me user too. agent string yeah. of a new browser to like. You know, it wouldn't have been Node.js back then. It would have been like some PHP thing or it was just a, it was like a flea market of, of ideas. It was almost like it was written by a bunch of different people. And in my, you know, back then SEO was, I I think, you know, it was a big deal then. It's still a big deal, I think. But, uh, it, it, like to think that I was blogging was going to attract traffic with any of that was comical. And even if I did get traffic, some at weirdly, some of my posts, I don't know where they got linked to, but a lot of them weird ones get traffic still, but they have nothing to do with now or then with what I actually did service wise. So what's the point? Exactly. If I go in Google analytics and look at like we, I was guilty of the same thing. If I go in Google analytics and look at like, Oh, what are the top blog posts? I think like our most, like the most trafficked entry page on the ETH cycle website, much to my consternation is a article like a CSS how to on like, uh, on how to make images black and white and then color on hover. I think that's like the number one post <laughs> that doesn't help me. <laughs> right. But so instead what I did, um, I didn't delete anything. I don't have like in my header, I don't, people have like blog and blog. I don't have that. I just have a page called resources. And then on resources, I've got the best of, um, the blog. I call it the best of the Eat cycle library and the best of the Shopify podcast. So I'm opening, not only like, am I really opening the kimono and providing all this wonderful, free, valuable content that teaches people how to do what I do you know, which demonstrates expertise and a willingness to help. Now I'm organizing it in this unconventional but really helpful way. Like how useful is it like, oh, blog, okay, great. I'm going to go scroll through 10 pages. No, no one's going to do that. They're going to like scroll through page one maybe. Absolutely. Well, Kurt, I think that's a great place to leave it. Thanks so much uh, for coming on the show. Where can people find out more? Uh, head to KurtElster.com and sign up for my newsletter. Uh, check out EtherCycle.com. It's a, a great example of, of productized consulting in action. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. That's it for today. I'm Jonathan Stark, and this is Ditching Hourly. Thanks for listening. The next time someone asks you for your hourly rate, remember to visit valuepricingbootcamp.com to sign up for my free email course. Again, that URL is valuepricingbootcamp.com.